Good evening, good evening. Hope everybody's good. Had a good week, a good day. Well, since nobody reminded me when to start, I'm assuming that nobody's going to remind me when to end, and so we might just be here for all night. We'll see. So unless somebody, I don't have my clock, it's on the phone, so unless somebody kind of gives me a nod when it's 7.30 or so, I'll just keep on going, and I'll assume that that's what you want. No. So let's go through a couple of our prayer concerns. I talked to Willa Moore today, and I, I had heard that they had taken Ted to the urgent care ER or something this past weekend with heart issues, heart concerns. And they carried him to Chapel Hill and did some stuff, some tests, but decided to just send him home and let him go see his, his cardiologist. And so he did that sometime this week, and they decided. I have never heard, never heard of this, but I guess for you know, his, his heart's out of rhythm, they did a cardioverse, cardio, I don't, I don't know, I've never heard of that. Anyway, to try to get his heart back in rhythm, and then in the morning, they're going to put a pacemaker in, and then throughout the rest of the week, he has to be on some kind of medicine that they have to monitor for, like, he, he has to stay in the hospital probably till Friday, I think he's in... Cape Fear down in Fayetteville for doing that. But I want to remember Mr. Ted. And then Catherine Elliott's been having issues with her back and maybe hips or something and, um, and a lot of pain. So we want to remember her. And then I um, want to keep Christine Burke in our prayers. Thank heavens she didn't have the heart attack like they thought last week, uh, but still having to be monitored on a heart monitor. And, and on some medicine to try to uh, get the infection that, that she had away. And then Scott Thomas, which is Alicia's nephew, is, is mending and woke up and a little bit and doing a little bit better, but we still want to remember him. And then Bobby Ward is Miss Ann's sister who's basically in hospice time, so I um, want to remember her as well. Anybody else that you'd like for us to lift up tonight? Anybody else on your heart or mind that you want us to pray for tonight? Okay, dope. Well, let's pray together, and then we'll get started with our, our study. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. And we thank you for uh, just the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And the uh, the promise that, that your grace is sufficient for anything that we go through. And so with that in mind, we, we know that uh, when we're discussing prayer concerns and prayer lists, that, that not only are you the God who is concerned about what we're concerned about, but as importantly or more importantly, you're the God who can do something about it. Now you can provide healing, you can provide comfort, you can provide strength, you can provide direction, uh, you can uh, work in people's lives. And so we, we bring our prayers to you, Lord, with full trust that, uh, that you are capable, that, that we were putting, putting our loved ones here in good hands when we put them in your hands. And so we, we do lift up Mr. Ted. Uh, we pray that he's already feeling a little bit better with what they've done, the procedure they've done. We, we pray for this uh, pacemaker procedure in the morning, that it would go well, that, that you would strengthen his body uh, to receive that uh, and to work with that. And we pray for just the whole process of putting it in and, and that you would be with his doctor, surgeons that are doing that. And then we pray for for just getting his heart back in rhythm that, that this procedure would work and this medicine would work in accomplishing that. And we pray for Miss Catherine uh, with her back issues, hip issues. Just pray that, that you would uh, ease her, her pain, her discomfort, uh, help her doctors to know how to best help her. But we just pray that you would outright heal her with your own divine hand, if that be in your will. And then we pray for uh, Scott Thomas, we thank you for the small improvements that he's making. We just pray for continued improvement and continued uh, progress uh, in healing. And uh, we pray for his family and loved ones and supporting him during that. And we pray for Miss Bobby Ward, just that 
Uh, you would work in her heart to draw her close to you and give her peace and make sure that she's completely right with you, that she has uh, accepted Jesus as her Savior uh, and that, uh, that you would just draw her to yourself in these days. And, and if, that's, if that's true in her heart already, that you would just uh, help her to feel your love and your presence uh, as, she, as she starts this transition, hopefully into your kingdom. We'll pray for Miss Christine, just that you would help her to feel better and better and better. We're not, not sure who or who all was involved in this accident out on the highway. Uh, I'll just pray that, that you would be with everyone involved in that situation. Uh, pray that everybody's all right or, or that, that they're in good hands uh, in helping them to, to get there. And so we, we pray for our time together tonight, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to study your word together, the opportunity to fellowship together and just be together as your people. Just pray that you would give us a, a strong awareness of your presence here with us and, and help us to feel your spirit, help us to, to, to sense your word uh, speaking to us and teaching us. And um, we just pray that everything that we say and do would glorify you and, and help us to grow in our faith and help us to be more like you, help us to live out any truths uh, that we learn. And um, we just put our... Put our trust in you, Lord, and speak and, and be with us tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay. So we, we're continuing in our study of creation or of, of God's uh, the study of origins of where it all came from. I'm not going to review everything that we've gone over already, but um, I do want to uh, our truth statements about creation that we try to memorize just to get a gist of the doctrine. Nothing just happened. God created it all. And uh, therefore I have a purpose in this world. The reason I exist is to glorify God, to, to live out his purposes in, our, in my life. And uh, so we've gone through uh, a bunch of lessons from creation already. But last week we started talking about how where a couple weeks ago we, we talked about how man or, or people are the crown of God's creation, that, that we, are, we are the top of his creation, we are the point of his creation. And then last week we took it a step further saying that, that we were made in God's image. And then we started talking about what does that mean, that we are made in God's image. We talked about how, like God, people have the ability to think and reason and know and to use our minds and to use our brains. Uh, second, like God, people have the, the ability to feel emotions, a bunch of emotions. Uh, third, like God, people have the ability to know right from wrong. We have a conscience uh, that helps guide us in knowing right from wrong. Uh, fourth, like God, people have free will. Uh, he gives us uh, the choice of whether whether to obey him or, or not, whether to enter into a relationship with him or not. And we have that free will. And we couldn't truly love him back if he forced us into that relationship. So he gives us a choice. Uh, hopefully, all of you have made that choice to love Jesus, to love God back, and to receive his love and enter into that saving relationship with him. Uh, but he gives us the choice, whether to or not. Uh, fifth, uh, in some way or another, our gender, being man and being woman, is tied up with what it means to be created in God's image. He said that both man and female, male and female, were made in God's image. And so uh, your being as, as a woman, uh, you were made in God's image. My being as a man, I was made in God's image. And so God is, in his fullness, is bigger than either man or woman. Uh, and so he, he lives out some of his characteristics uh, with, with male traits and some with female traits. And so let's, let's talk a little bit more about being made in God's image. 
and then we'll move on to another point after that. So sixth, like God, people have the ability to enter into relationships, uh, both with other people and with God. So God himself is relational. Uh, the Bible teaches that all of creation was put into place specifically so that God could have a loving relationship with people, with us. Uh, Paul wrote in Ephesians 1.4 in the message paraphrase, long before he laid down the earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He had settled on us to be the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. And so the whole reason for all of creation, uh, in addition to, to glorifying God and, and, and recognizing God, is he put it here so that we could know him, so that we could have a relationship with him. Now, even after people broke that perfect relationship with God by choosing sin over obedience, God took radical steps to reconcile that broken relationship. And Jesus' death on the cross made forgiveness and reconciliation and peace with God possible again. So even after we blew it, he really wants that relationship with, with us, he wants our relationship with him to be restored. And that's the whole point of Jesus coming into this world is so that our broken relationship with God could be restored, reconciled. Now, Paul wrote in Romans 5, 11, living Bible paraphrase, now we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins, making us friends of God. Isn't that a pretty amazing concept in itself, that we can be friends with God? Um, even better than that, though, uh, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, God literally adopts us into his family. So it's not just a friendship relationship, it is a family relationship. It's a a father-son, father-daughter relationship when we put our trust in Jesus. It's all about that close, intimate relationship with him. Now, Paul wrote in Galatians 4, 4 and 5, But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. And so we can literally be God's children, sons and daughters of God, based on that adoption relationship when we put our trust in him. Now, because we were made in the image of God, we can have relationships with each other and with other people. And we are relational beings. We are social beings, just like God. And we can have that relationship with him. And then seventh, uh, like God, we have a spirit or a soul that lasts forever. Now, this physical body that you live in is not all there is to you. Now, when you die physically, uh, that's not just the end of things. There, there's something that, that is the real you that is bigger than your physical body. And because of sin, our physical bodies are going to give out and die someday unless Jesus comes back and raptures us first. But though, uh, otherwise, our physical bodies will give out and we will die at some point. But physical death is not the end of life. Because we are made in God's image, we are made for eternity. Uh, wise King Solomon revealed in Ecclesiastes 3.11, he has set eternity in the human heart. Uh, I don't know of a single person who doesn't have the desire to keep living. I mean, to, to keep going on. I understand the, the tragedy of suicide stuff and those, those horrible circumstances, but in general, 
most people want to live as long as they can live and uh, to keep going on and on is because God has put that desire in our hearts to live forever, to be eternal. And God wants you to be a part of his family forever. Uh, Paul wrote in Ephesians 1.10, Living Bible Paraphrase, and this was his purpose, that when the time is right, he will gather us all together from wherever we are, in heaven or on earth, to be with him in Christ forever. And so that's God's desire for us, is to be in that connection with him, that relationship with him, to be with him forever throughout all of eternity. And so here's the, the reality, whether people want to accept it or admit it or, or grapple with it or not, your soul will last forever somewhere. When you physically die, your spirit will exit your body and will move on to one of two places, either heaven with God or hell separated from God. Because all people have sinned against God, they have condemned themselves to spend eternity separated from God in a place of judgment that was prepared really for the devil and his legions. But when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and then rose from the grave, he made it possible for you and for me when we die, to immediately enter his glorious presence in heaven. Uh, but he's not going to force you to be a part of his family. You have to make that choice to enter into that saving relationship with him, uh, to repent of your sin and to put your trust in, in Jesus' death and resurrection and to receive, uh, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to accept that or you will continue to be condemned uh, and, and condemned to spend eternity separated from him. And so uh, I hope that, that you have made that choice already. I feel pretty confident that all of us in this room have. Um, but if not, don't wait too long. Put your trust in Jesus so that you know that when you die, your soul will go to be with him in heaven. So if you haven't already done so, choose Christ today. So part of what it means to be made in the image of God is that our soul or our spirit will live forever somewhere. Okay, next, let's move on to an, another point outside of being having been made in God's image. Uh, so the creation account reveals that God made people to be stewards or managers of his perfect creation. Uh, we read in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over every living creature that moves on the ground. So the first people were given the responsibility of overseeing uh, this, this creation that God had placed them in. But that is no less true for us today than it was for Adam and Eve several thousand years ago. Uh, it is still our responsibility to care for to look after uh, this creation, uh, to be stewards or managers of his creation. Now, a steward is simply somebody who takes care of somebody else's stuff or somebody else's property. Um, from the very beginning, God has given man the responsibility of taking care of his creation. Uh, the unfortunate truth is that people and civilization has not been very responsible managers of the earth on which we live. Hence, depleted resources, animal extinction, malnourished communities. Um, so here's something that, that I think 
our society has a hard time with. Though we have become obsessed with the idea of ownership, um, of owning things, the simple truth is that God owns everything. God owns everything. It's all his. He merely lets us manage it for a short while. Then when we're gone, when we're dead, he'll give someone else the responsibility of managing that stuff. And we don't like to hear that. We think that, that we are more important if we have a lot of stuff or that we're more secure if we have a lot of stuff. But the simple reality is we're not taking it with us where we go, when we go, where we go. It's not ultimately in the big scheme of eternity our stuff. It's God's everything. It's all his. And so um, are we good managers? Uh, not, not, not just humanity with, with this creation, but uh, of the resources that, that God has entrusted to each of us. Um, he has entrusted us with many, many resources, the earth, time, money, talents, spiritual gifts, physical property, relationships, etc. And so when we stand before God to give an account of our stewardship, of how we've managed those things that he's entrusted to us, may we receive the same condemnation or the same commendation, not condemnation, commendation or praise as the good stewards that are talked about in Matthew 25, 23, where their master said, well done, good and faithful servant, come and share your master's happiness. That's our goal, right? To stand before God one day and when we're being, when he's assessing our lives, he'll give us that, that praise. Well done, well done. And so, now, don't hear me wrong. I am not one of these climate extremists that, that it seems like, especially our government today, uh, but it's been there forever uh, that, that are trying to change all the laws and make us drive electric cars and trying to destroy the oil industry and all of those things uh, to get the temperature down a couple degrees over this and that. I am not one of those. And I don't, I don't think we should take this, uh, this lesson about being good managers to those crazy extremes. And I, I honestly believe those are crazy extremes because we know the ending, right? Uh, we know that uh, in the ending, uh, when, it, when it's all said and done, God is going to destroy all of this himself with fire and create a new heaven and a new earth for his people to live on and to be with him forever. A new heaven and a new earth is in the future. And so all the work to lower our temperature for a couple of degrees in 10 years or 100 years or whatever is pointless because we know where, where it's all headed. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be good managers of what God has entrusted to us. So from the beginning, God entrusted people to be stewards of his perfect creation, we need to live in such a way that shows our appreciation for, uh, and in a way that takes better care of, this precious earth that he has put in place for us. So uh, what time is it? What, where, where are we at time-wise? About 7.25? Okay, I can get another, another point in, I think. Uh, the creation account reveals that God gave us both the example and the command to work. Now, we don't always like to hear that one, do we? But that, that's how, that's the example he gave us and that's the command he gave us. Now, we read in Genesis 2, and I'm going to read verse 2 and verse 15. Now, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, and we're talking about the work of creation, um, he had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And skipping down to verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. 
So for the first six days of creation, God carefully demonstrated a solid work ethic as he went about the business of creating all that is. Then he put Adam in the Garden of Eden and instructed him to work at taking care of the garden. Uh, Charles Colson, uh, a, a, a great apologist uh, of, uh, I would say, this century, the last century, but he just passed away probably in the past 10 years. Uh, but he, he wrote this. Living a meaningful life consists simply in embracing the responsibilities and work given to us, whatever they are. The nature of work itself connects us with the moral order and the God who created it. There is intrinsic meaning to work well done. So it's valuable for us to, to work at the, the things that God has given us to, to work at. The Apostle Paul offered this wise counsel in Colossians 3, 23 and 24, New Living Translation. Work hard and cheerfully at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and the master that you are serving is Christ. And so whatever your job is, whatever your work is or was, uh, ultimately, we, our, our motivation is not just a paycheck, or our motivation is not just to be recognized by our employers, uh, but ultimately our work is done to glorify God and to please God and to follow God's example. So we were created to find satisfaction from the work that we do. So let, let's stop it there for tonight. Uh, we'll pick back up uh, with some more lessons next week. So any, any thoughts or words of, of wisdom or, or words of experience uh, that you'd like to share before we wrap it up? All right, well, let's close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that, um, that you have given us not only this beautiful creation that, that you've made for us, but that in so doing, you've given us many, 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 many important truths and principles and lessons about how you want us to live, about who you are, about who we are, and about how you want us to, to live in relationship with others and about how you want us to live in relationship with you. And so help us to, to not take these truths and principles and lessons for granted. Help us to appreciate them. Help us to, uh, to live our lives dedicated to fulfilling them and to living them out and to sharing them with others, especially our, our children and grandchildren. And Lord, we, we do pray that, that you would be glorified as we try to do that. And, but we pray for your help in doing that as well. And so be with us as we leave this place, as we go back to our homes. Keep us safe. Uh, keep us right in the middle of your perfect will for each of our lives. And help us to live each day with purpose and intentionality. And trying to, to live for your glory and trying to live in a way that not only honors you, but also in a way that, that helps others to see you. And give us courage, give us boldness to, to share our relationship with you with others and to share uh, the hope that you have given us and the promises that you've given us. And help us to be excited about that. Help us to be passionate about that so that that we will live them out in a way that people can see that will draw others to you. And so we, we put our trust in you. We definitely give you our thanksgiving. And uh, we pray, Lord, that, that you would be with us always, as you promised. We love you. It's in Jesus' perfect name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you all for coming.
Hope you have a great rest of the night and a great rest of the week. And we'll, well, don't, don't forget our Valentine's dinner Saturday. If you, uh, it's not too late to, to plan on coming to that. Uh, if, if you didn't sign up and you want to come, it wouldn't hurt to, to give me a, a notion or a holler or Leanne a notion or a holler uh, to let us know that. There'll be uh, a spaghetti dinner, right? And also some great entertainment. Jordan Pickett, which is a, he is a local I think he just graduated high school, so a young, young adult man uh, who sings some country stuff and some Christian stuff and some personal stuff that he has written himself, so it's going to be a special treat, so um, uh, come out and join us this Saturday at 6 o'clock uh, if you want to join us for that, so um, thanks and God bless. Have a great week, rest of the week. Let's shut this down.